Well, welcome everyone. Great to connect again with you. Uh, last uh, session we looked at the 35 reasons Jesus cannot return in the next seven years. That was part one. This is part two. And I hope that the whole picture of the end times and what is going to take place is becoming so much clearer to you because actually it is crystal clear when you really get into it. And I hope that if you followed from the beginning till now that you are clearly convinced of what God says in His Word. And if not, I hope after today you'll be even greater, greatly convinced and it will clear up some misconceptions in your understanding with regards to the end. So, like I mentioned last time, Jesus cannot come back just at any time. He has to come back at a specific time. And we are spot on on God's prophetic time clock. And um, there are a lot of people that will say, Jesus can come tomorrow. No, he cannot. He cannot come back tomorrow. He's got to, there are certain things that have to be fulfilled. Otherwise, God is going against his word and he never contradicts his word. So we need to be clear and understand that God cannot come back tomorrow because there are so many things that still need to take place. And we're going to look at uh, 15 other reasons on top of the 20 that we looked at last session. So here's the 21st reason. The third world war has to take place. Now, those of you that have listened to the other teachings will understand, and because you already have a basis, the sixth trumpet, which is still to take place, is talking about the Third World War, or at least what I believe to be the Third World War. Revelations 19, verse 13 to 21 reads as follows. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the horn of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the river, great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for the very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Do you see that it is a specific time? It says they're ready for a very, the, this very hour, day, month, and year. God does not allow things to happen just haphazardly. It, it has to fall in with his prophetic time clock. And then it says there, and here we're released to kill a third of mankind. One third of mankind is going to be killed in this war. Let, for the sake of um, clarity, we're going to say the third world war because we've had World War I, World War II, and this is World War Three. Verse 16 says, the number of the mounted troops was 200 million. I heard their number. The horses and the riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in the mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes having heads with which they inflicted injury. The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, and stone and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murder, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their theft. So here we see that even though many, a third of the world population was destroyed, you're still going to get billions of people that will not repent of their wicked ways. <coughs> so let's get into this a little bit. So there's going to be a, world, uh, a third world war. It's going to kill one third of the world's population. It also says that it's going to start. It's going to take start in the Euph Euphrates. Now, if you go, and you should already know this from our teachings, that the Euphrates starts in in Turkey, goes down Syria, goes down Iraq, and then borders at the bottom of Iran, Iraq, and then goes out into the Persian Gulf. Which means that, and that is all owned by who? None other than the 
Islamic states. So it is all owned by them, which means that they are going to be involved in this war. Okay? So that means they will also have to be maybe totally decimated, who knows? But we can presume. But one third is a lot of people. Now, we know that uh, it says they're 200 million army strong. Now, it, is that talking about China? Because China has a 2 million army, uh, army that is strong enough to form 2 million people. So does India, although India are not very militant and don't want war, but who knows with politics. Then what about uh, all the Islamic countries together, all those that serve Allah, or whatever you want to call it, if, you want to, if all the Muslims come together, they are about 1.8, 1.9 uh, billion. They, so they can easily form an army of 2 million. We're not sure how this is going to play out, but we do know that there's going to be this world war, and tragically, one third of the world's population will be wiped out. Now, when is this going to happen? We're not sure. I, I'm not sure. But we do know it's going to happen before the Great Tribulation. And before the Great Tribulation is a time of peace. That three and a half years before will be a time of peace. So I would say that it will be before the peace treaty that's signed in the Middle East. That is when this will take place. We're not sure when, but I believe it will take place then. Um, so who knows? But the Bible says it will happen, which means it will happen. And a one third, tragically, of the world population will be destroyed. Number 22, the preparation of Armageddon will take place. Revelation 16, 16 says, Then they gathered the kings together to, to the place that is that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. And they're going to get the, 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 I believe the world through the United Nations will come together and they will say, we're not going to allow the Israel to carry on like this, and they're going to come together <coughs> at a place called Armageddon. Zechariah 12 verse 9 says, On that day I will send, set out to destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem. And when Armageddon, the preparation starts to take place, Armageddon takes place, I believe that is when the rapture takes place. And whether that's where they're going to cry out to God, the Jews are going to cry out to God and say, Messiah, we need you like never before. And he's going to come and intervene as the world goes against them and tries to destroy them. And God's going to rapture the church, and that's when Armageddon will take place. We read in Zechariah 12, verse 2 to 4, it says, I'm going to make Jerusalem a cup that sends all the surrounding people reeling. Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. And we read, we had a look last week where it says, those in Judea flee. So it says, yeah, they will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. On that day when all the nations on, of the earth are gathered against her. Now, obviously, all the nations cannot be gathered around her, which means that it needs to be all the nations that are working together. In other words, and the only body that allows this to take place is the United Nations. So all the countries of the world through the United Nations agreeing, and this is what it, the, that's why the Bible says that all the nations are gathered against her. I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. In other words, they will not bow. They will not change their mind. They will not surrender. It says that all who try to move it will injure themselves. God will not allow Israel, Jerusalem, to be destroyed. On that day, I will strike every horse with panic, and its riders will, with madness, declares the Lord. I will keep a watchful eye over the house of Judah, but I will blind all the horses of the nation. So I believe that the Antichrist is going to organize Armageddon to take place, and they're going to go against, firstly, starting in Judea, drive them into Jerusalem, those that do choose to flee, and then they will surround Jerusalem and try to start, start to attack Jerusalem, and that's when God is going to say, enough is enough. The rapture will take place, and that's when the wrath of God will be poured out on uh, the nations of the world. Point 23. There needs to be a peace treaty signed in the Middle East. Daniel 9 verse 27, and most people in the world talk about this, 
and agree on this. It says there in verse 27, <coughs> he, will, he will, meaning the Antichrist, will confirm a covenant with many for, for one seven. He will confirm a peace treaty for seven years in the middle of the, and then it says there in the middle of the seven, he will uh, put an end to sacrifice and offering and on the wings of the temple he will set up an abomination that caused desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Now in 1948 when Israel became a nation literally one minute after midnight they were attacked because Satan does not want Israel to survive because if Israel survives God wins and Satan wants to be worshipped just like God is worshipped and that will never take place. By some it is. Some do worship him, foolishly choose to, but he will not be worshipped by all. All those that choose to worship God will one day be with him for eternity and those that choose not will be in eternity in hell. Now, <coughs> President Trump came into office. One of his greatest goals or one of his top priorities and goals is to get this peace treaty signed. I guarantee you that Donald Trump will not get this peace treaty signed. Yet he is a brilliant negotiator. I acknowledge that. He has written the art of the deal. He has, he has got his two most trusted allies uh, or aides uh, to help him with organizing this peace treaty. And they've been worked, oh, it's his son-in-law, Jared Kushner and his 20-year-old uh, um, lawyer, Jason Greenblatt, and they've been working on this peace treaty for two years. It's 181 pages long, this document, and it is brilliant, and if you go and study it, you will see that all, there are five major points that have to be in there. All, there are four points that are in there that are exactly in Scripture. So it is brilliantly put together. He's done a better job than all other presidents, past presidents of the United States put together. So they have done a brilliant job on this, but I guarantee you that Donald Trump, President Donald Trump will not be the one to get this, this um, peace treaty signed because he is not the Antichrist. It is the Antichrist, I believe, that will organize this peace treaty to be signed. And I, I and from my understanding, I believe that this will happen after the Third World War, where he's going to say enough is enough. We need to have peace in the Middle East. Now, Mohammed Abbas is the president of the state of Palestine, and he is furious because uh, President Trump moved, uh, recognized Jerusalem as the undivided eternal capital of uh, Jerusalem, as the undivided eternal capital of Israel, and then moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And because of that, he, does, he doesn't even want to come to the table. But the Bible says that this had to take place, which is awesome because this is exactly what needed to take place. And the scriptures are true every time. Now, there, will, there would have been no other president that would have done this. I guarantee you the Democrats would never have done this because they serve a demonic globalist agenda. <coughs> now, this peace treaty will be signed, and when it is signed, and it will be coordinated, I believe, by the Antichrist, and when this is signed, this will be one of the most important prophetic signs in the Bible, second to the coming of the Lord Jesus, uh, second to the Lord's resurrection in the Bible. This will be the, one of the most incredible major events and the minute that happens, you can start counting. Now, I know many people believe in a pre-tribulation. That means, according to their belief system, they won't even know the Antichrist, and they will have already gone. Well, I don't understand how they can believe that or think that because there are so many scriptures that just don't make sense with that belief system. But like I've said before, this should not divide the church. We should be ready, irrespective. But I guarantee you that if those that believe in pre-trip and it is not true, they are going to find the next seven years uh, an incredibly difficult time to understand and an incredible difficult pull to swallow in their lives. So, number 24, the Antichrist will head 
<coughs> up the revived Roman Empire. Sadly, I can't get into this very much, but we read in Daniel 2, verse 41 to verse 43, and it says there, Just as you saw the feet and toes were partly of baked clay and partly of iron, so this will be a divided kingdom. Yet it will have some of the strength of iron in it, even as you saw iron mixed with clay. As the toes were partly iron and partly clay, so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. And just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. Now, I believe that the new world order will be headed up by the Antichrist. I believe that uh, this will be the United Nations. And I believe the power in the end will shift to Europe. And uh, that's where the world will be run from. And if you take Europe, the United Nations, I mean, sorry, the EU, they are very divided. And uh, yeah, you get some that are strong and some that are not at all strong. And this is definitely a picture of the revived Roman Empire. Now, verse 20, the, 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 the next point, 25, the false prophet will head up the one world religion. Revelation 19, 20 says, but the beast was captured and with him the false prophets who had pro performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. So there we see that the Antichrist and the false prophet will uh, be heading up the, the, world, the, the political arena, but the false prophet will be heading up the religious, uh, uh, the one world religion or religious, relig uh, world, re one world religion. So um, the false prophet, according to the scriptures, will be the one. And we believe that he will come from the Vatican. And you can go and look at a teaching that I did on that. <coughs> now, sadly, the United Nations is, is, has been controlled by a criminal syndicate. And uh, the Vatican <laughs> and, a few, uh, and a very few can see the, this truth. But they have, an organized, they have a group called the Jesuits in that group. Sadly, the United States is under occupation by a criminal syndicate, um, and the Vatican are very, is basically, it's through the Vatican, and very few people know this truth. Now, the Jesuits are a military arm of the Roman Catholic Church, and they want to take over the world's religious and political system, and sadly, they this has been done through the Jesuits, the Order of St. Ignatius. And I'm not going to get into that, but you can go and do your study in that regard. Then, the 26th point. The Antichrist will stop animal sacrifice in the Third Temple. And we learned last week that a Third Temple will be built on the Temple Mount. And as you know or should know that the Jews believe in the Old Testament, so they believe in animal sacrifice for the forgiveness of the sins, and they will be doing animal sacrifice in the temple once it's been built. Daniel 9 verse 23 says, He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven, the peace treaty. And, and then it says that in the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offerings. In other words, he will come and he will break the covenant. And he will come and say, come there and say, guys, you don't need to do this anymore because actually I am your Messiah. Okay? And on the wings of the temple upon will sit up an abomination that caused desolation until the end that his decree is poured out on him. Then we read in Daniel 11 verse 31, his arm, armed forces will rise up to desecrate the temple fortress and will abolish the daily sacrifice. Then they will set up the abomination that causes desolation. So it says there, his armed forces will rise up to desecrate the temple fortress and will abolish the daily sacrifice. He's going to force animal sacrifices to stop. 
<laughs> but he will, <coughs> he will declare himself to be God. And this is where the Bible says that the great tribulation would take place and it will, there will be distress like no other time in all of history at this point in time. So the third temple is to be built and animal sacrifices will take place. And after this carries on for a time, you're going to get animal, sac animal activists going ballistic and saying this cannot be done, it's not acceptable. And they are going to lobby that this stops and eventually the pressure will mount and the Antichrist will stop this. Number 27, the Antichrist will break the seven-year peace treaty. Daniel 9 verse 27 says, He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wings of the temple, he will set, an, set up an abomination that caused desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. So here we see that he will break the peace treaty that he put in place. In other words, someone that, uh, that agrees on a peace treaty, signs it, and then goes against it, is not someone that can be trusted. And that is Satan. He is there to steal, kill, and destroy. And the Antichrist is his pawn that works on his behalf. And here the Bible makes it very, very clear. We cannot trust the Antichrist, the person that will head up the United Nations in some years to come. Number 28. The two witnesses evangelize the world and do miracles. There are going to be two witnesses that are going to evangelize right throughout the earth, and you're going to see many salvations taking place. We read in Revelation 11, 1 to 14, it says there, I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, Go and measure the temple of God and the altar and count the worshippers there, but exclude the outer court. Do not, do not measure it because it has been given, been given to the Gentiles. In other words, what is going to happen is there's going to be a, uh, this peace treaty sign. They're going to say, okay, is, to the Jews, you can build your temple on the Temple Mount and there's going to be a shared arrangement on the Temple Mount. But the outer court will, will be a shared part of uh, the Temple Mount. And that's why even in the scripture says, do not even measure that because it belongs to the Gentiles. Because God, if it's halfway, it is no way with God. So here it says that very clearly. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. Three and a half years, they're going to make life terrible. Verse 3, and I will give power to, to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for hundred and for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouth and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. Verse 6, these men have, the, have power to shut up the skies so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. And in and they have power to turn the waters into blood, to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city with a, with a figure figuratively called Sodom and Gomorrah, where also the Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, men from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. In other words, the United Nations will not allow them to be buried. These guys will testify, and many people will come to salvation, I believe, because of this. But then they will be overthrown and killed when God allows it after basically three and a half years. They will be executed, lying in the streets of Jerusalem, and they will not allow it to be buried. And the, because the world is so godless, 
they are not going to allow them. They are going to be overjoyed because they have caused them so much distress because they will have stopped the rains, allowed certain plagues in certain areas, etc., etc. So, yeah, this is what the Bible is saying. For, uh, they will not be allowed to be buried. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because the two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. Because, then verse 11, but after the three and a half days, a breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while the enemies looked on. At that very hour, there was a severe earthquake and a tenth of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake. And the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. Those that survived are going to know this is a work of God. And those Jews are going to bow their knees and say, Lord, here we are. And they're going to give glory to God. Verse 14, the second woe is past, the third woe is to come. So we're going to see a three and a half year period where these two will evangelize the whole earth. Why? Because we'll have satellite TV. Satellite TV will also show these people dead on the street and the world's going to be over the moon, give gifts to each other and celebrate the fact that they are dead. Why? Because they caused them so much distress through the plagues and stopping of rain, etc., etc. Verse 20, uh, number 29. There will be revival because the, of the two witnesses evangelizing. We read in Revelation 7, verse 4 to 10, it says, Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. And you can go through those scriptures. And then in verse 9, we drop down there. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. Uh, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And here we see that there are going to be many people, billions of people coming to salvation. Well, I believe they'll already be saved uh, prior to this, um, but I do believe some will come to salvation during this uh, three and a half year period where the mark of the beast is forced. People are going to say, I don't want it, and they will come to see, but actually this is, the Bible is what it says it is, <coughs> and they will be uh, choose to serve God with all of their heart. And you must remember, satellite TV will be everywhere at that time because they're already working on internet being distributed throughout the world. Point 13. The mark of the beast to buy and sell will be forced upon all. And we had a look at that a few sessions ago. Just a reminder, Revelations 13, 16 to 18 says, He forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, uh, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it, it is man's number. His na number is 666. Six, six. Now, you get some people that say that this mark is a figurative, um, it's just a figure of speech. Well, can you tell me, can you tell me, how can that be? Because it says you will receive a mark on your right hand or on your forehead so that you can buy or sell, which means it will have to have your digital barcode that can transact on your behalf. It is quite obvious that this is talking about the microchip. This is not rocket science. This is just plain in your face obvious. It is saying that the mark of the beast is not a Sabbath rest or any of that nonsense. It is talking about a digital system that can transact for you and we already have that in place and it's already working in some countries around the world where people are willingly choosing to take on the microchip. Number 31, technology will advance at an incredible rate. Revelations 13:17 says, so 
that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, you must understand that for them to get to this point, technology is going to have to advance even more than what it has. We are very close there to this, I believe. You will have, we will have to have a one world currency for this to take place. But you must understand that technology is advancing at such an incredible rate. We already have 5G. 5G can, where we used to take hours to download a movie, it's going to be now be able to download it in literal few seconds. A whole a high definition movie, I think, I don't know, I can't remember if it's three, I think it's three minutes or three seconds, something ridiculous like that, which is incredible. We have surveillance cameras everywhere. You have, and this is why they want the 5G towers, so that they can control us and see what where we are at all times. And this is already taking place. Then if you go and study up, you will see that technology is advancing or doubling uh, computer technology. Five, uh, every five months, it is doubling. So you just cannot keep up. It's just incredible at the speed at which the advancement, advancement of technology is taking place. Number 32. There will be a one world economic and political system in place. And I've gone through that. And this is the scripture we've read earlier, Revelations 13, 16. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, slave and free, to receive, receive a mark on his right hand or forehand for the purposes of buying and selling. Now, obviously, you will have to have a one world economic system for that to take place and a, a buy into a one world political system. Otherwise, this will not work. So we are going to have a one world economic system, and this will run through a microchip, I believe, that is put in our right hand or our foreheads. For those that choose to take it, I certainly will not. Uh, another thing is the Pope has been trying to establish uh, a basic minimum wage for everyone in the world. So has Mark Zuckerberg. He's been uh, punting for this. Do you know that through this COVID-19, they've tried, they've all the, all the nations just about in the world that are part of the United Nations have ascribed to this, and they have tried to ascertain what is the minimum wage or the minimum amount that a person needs to be able to live on. And they have been working to try and achieve this. That is why they've given certain people that do not have an income a small little stipend so that they can live. But the Bible says, if you do not work, you shall not eat. However, this is a system of Satan that they are trying to bring about where they reward people that are lazy and not willing to work. <coughs> However, I do believe that if there's not jobs available, they should be created by the state and then, yes, given a stipend. So, number 33. People will laugh at Christians believing Jesus will return. 2 Peter 3 verse 4 says, They will say, what is, Where is this coming? He pro promised. Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. And the wicked will not understand, and they do not understand, and they, yes, they do think that Christians are crazy. But I guarantee you they can laugh as much as they want. But the Bible will take place as it is foretold. God's pro prophetic word will be fulfilled. So they are welcome to laugh, but they will laugh. La we were the ones that will laugh last. And sadly, we will not be laughing. We will be mourning on their behalf. Number 34, Christians will understand the signs of the time. Matthew 13, verse 11, it says, He replied, The knowledge of the secret of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them, those that do not believe. God is revealing the truths of what is taking place in the end to those, His children, that love and serve Him and that seek to understand and know the truth and what is taking place. So I believe that God is going to, uh, going, going to continue to reveal things that are going to take place in the, par in the future to those that love him. And Christians will understand the signs of the time, but those that do not serve him will have no clue of what's going on. And 
if you talk to some people, they literally have no clue, and it is actually very sad and astounding. But you then can understand they never read the Word of God. Number 34. I mean, number 35, the last one. Israel will, will be on the world center stage. We read in Zechariah 12, verse 3. <laughs> and on that day when all the nations of the earth are gathered against you, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. Now, Israel will be on the center stage. And the funny thing is, Israel is a very, very, very small country. There are many other countries in the world that are bigger than Israel. And I guarantee you do not even know the country's name. You do not even know where they are. Most of you, if not all of you, will, know, will not know some of many of the smaller countries around the world. However, the, the, the reason that this small little piece of land is so contentious is because it is a spiritual issue. Do you know that the, the United Nations said that they would give 50 billion to the Palestinians if they signed a peace treaty. Yet they're not willing to, because it's not about money. This is about destroying Israel from the face of the earth. It is a demonic, godless movement to destroy Israel. And hence, they are not interested in that. And then I have a couple more points, but I think I'm going to end it here. You can go and do some research yourself. Maybe if I write a book one day, if I get in some people that uh, were so into uh, my ministry that I'm able to actually uh, have the funds to do it, then you will see them. Otherwise, these will be remain. There's 36, 37. So we're going to, I'm going to end it at that. Uh, I want to encourage you to study God's word with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. Love him as he calls us to in that way. And study God's word. Day, both day and night, so that you understand and that these things will not overtake you like a thief in the night. Because we as his church will not be, it will not overcome us like a thief in the night. It is not going, we are going to know the signs of the times. We might not know the day or the hour, but we certainly will know the season. And may we be prepared. May we fall in love with our Savior Jesus Christ all over again. And may we stand in amazement at God's word. And never ever allow anyone to say that Jesus can come tomorrow because it's not true. There are at least 35, 37 signs that Jesus will not return at least in the next seven years. So may you be blessed. May you study God's word. And if you find any error in my teaching, I encourage you to share that with me. Um, you can get in contact with me if you really seek, it, seek to get in contact with me. You will find me and you can let me know and I will then answer your questions in that regard. But God bless you. May you grow in his love and may the peace of God, may the Holy Spirit and his revelation be yours, not just today but always. God bless you. Thank you.